So let's put all this together and see how we can use a B plus tree to implement an index in an actual database. So I want to go back to this slide I showed before where I was highlighting the differences between internal nodes and leaves. They have a different structure and they hold different information. Internal nodes hold only keys. So there's no um, value associated with each key in the internal node. But the leaf nodes have an associated value with the key. So what is that extra data held in the leaf nodes? Well, it depends on which index it is. So remember from last lecture, I talked about how every table automatically has a primary index. And that's just an index built on the primary key of the table. It's also sometimes called the clustered index, and you may hear that term. So the primary index, though, is just a B plus tree. Um, it's special, though, in that the leaf nodes, the extra data held in the leaf nodes, are the full rows themselves. So the table is actually stored just in the primary index. It's not like there's some table out there and then there's a primary index referencing that table. Uh, the primary index is the table. You can think of it that way. Uh, we usually draw the table as one contiguous big um, list of rows, but really the rows are broken up into multiple pages. So each one of these leaf nodes here is a page, and each of them contain some of the rows in the table. So let's look at one of them here. Um, the, whatever the primary key in this table is, it's just these letters. So here are some primary keys for that table. Um, here's the primary key C and the rest of the row associated with primary key C. In this example, uh, my table would only have two rows, or two columns. So whatever the primary key column is plus this column two. That could be a date or a string or anything. Uh, the entire table data is stored in the leaf nodes of this primary index. But let's look at a more concrete example. So here's the student's table, and its primary key is UID, so we're automatically going to get an index built on UID, and the index itself is what will hold the table rows. So I've drawn the primary index here kind of in two parts. I've got the internal nodes up here, and then I've got the leaf nodes down here uh, drawn in the form of a table. But let's, let's look at these pointers. So everything to the left of the key 3. So that's pointing here into this page. So this page is holding two rows. And those are the two rows that have UIDs less than three. And right there in the page is the rest of the row data. So it would contain the name and the GPA for those, for those records. And then we've got all of the other rows. So here's another node, a leaf node, or a page. Here's another leaf node. And a couple things uh, to notice here. First, not every key is stored in the tree part of the index. So every key does have to show up somewhere uh, in a leaf node, but they do not show up necessarily in the internal nodes. And that's part of what makes B plus trees compact, and these indexes don't actually take up as much disk space as you might think. Another thing to notice is that not all of these pages are full. So here's a page with some empty space in it. We could fit something else in there. Um, there are a couple more here. And this just this purely depends on the order in which rows were inserted or deleted into this table. Um, we haven't really seen how the tree gets built yet, but it is very possible for a page to be partially empty. They will never be uh, more than half empty though, so we're never going to waste too much space, and we'll see the details about that in the next lecture. So that's primary indexes. Now what about secondary indexes? So let's go back to this question of what are we storing alongside the search keys in a secondary index? And all we really need it to be is a pointer into the full row within the primary index. We don't want to store a copy uh, another copy of the full row. So leaf nodes in a secondary index are just going to store a pointer, 
And the form that that pointer will take is it's actually just going to be a copy of the primary key value for that row. And that primary key is enough to find the full row because we could just go do a lookup in the primary index. So instead of saving an actual um, disk sector and offset into the disk or a memory address, um, which you normally think of as being a pointer, our pointer is just going to be the primary key value for the row. So let's see how that looks. Um, here's the same table, and I've added a secondary index on GPA. So here's the secondary index just built on this GPA column. And this table over here, these are the leaf nodes of the primary index. So these are the actual table rows themselves. Um, so let's take a look at this GPA index. The search keys are just GPAs. And in the leaf nodes, I have the search keys themselves, which are just which are GPAs, and then associated with them are the associated primary key for that row. So over here we have a GPA of, GPA of 3.8 and a UID of 4, where that, where that 3.8 came from. And notice also, this is how a secondary index can handle duplicates. If the column is allowed to have duplicates, then all we need to do is put duplicate search keys into the leaf node, but have different corresponding uh, primary keys for each of them. So there are those primary keys corresponding to those two people that have 3.8 GPAs. So how do we, so this, this, this is how we store a pointer, um, quote unquote pointer, is just this primary key, rather than actually saving a disk address or a memory address. So let's see how a lookup now actually works. Um, let's say we want to find a person with a GPA of 3.7. So we'll need to use the GPA index to find that person, but all the GPA index is going to give us is a primary key. So we'll have to do another lookup. So we would start here and kind of traverse down the secondary index till we find the search key of 3.7 GPA. Now we know that there is a person with UID 5 that has that GPA. So we can take that 5 down and do another search into the primary index and traverse down there, and then we'll follow those pointers, and we can now eventually find the full row in the primary index. So it kind of just looks like this, the path through both trees. In order to use a secondary index, you have to actually use two indexes. It's always going to also involve a lookup in the primary index. And that raises a question. Why do we do it this way? Why do we store the primary key in the secondary leaf nodes instead of just storing a direct pointer into the file. Um, doing it the way we do, this it requires a, an additional lookup through another index. We have to look at search the secondary index, then we have to search the primary index. So why not just store a direct file pointer? And the reason is that records in the primary index can move. So as we're adding or removing things to the table, uh, we sometimes have to rearrange where we store things in order to maintain this perfect balance property in a B plus tree. So we actually have to take an existing record and move it to a different disk page in order to kind of rebalance things. So let's look at this simple little example with this small B plus tree. And I want to insert an M. The location where it would go is right here in this page A. But page A is already full. So we're going to have to make a new node and redistribute things so that everything in the left node is less than everything in the right node, um, which means one of these two things, either the K or the P, depending on where we put the new node and how we redistribute, one of those two things is going to have to move into a different page. Uh, the way it will actually end up is looking like this. The P will move over it into a new page and we'll put the M also into the new page. So K got to stay where it was in page A, but P had to move to page B. So that means if we were just storing direct file pointers from secondary indexes into that spot right there for anything that was looking for the row with primary key of P, 
any of those secondary indexes now have to go and be updated to point to that location on disk now. Whereas if the secondary index just uses the primary key as its pointer, none of them have to change. We can go do a search through the secondary index, find P, and then do a search through this new primary index, and it will automatically just be updated, and it will go find the right row uh, for the record with primary key of P. So now just to wrap up a few remaining considerations. First, how do you pick which index is the primary index? Um, and this is actually kind of a trick question because you've already decided that at, by the time you've picked the primary key uh, because the primary index is always just built on the primary key. So you made that decision more based on the relational model. Um, let's say you get it wrong though, so it's maybe better to rephrase this question, uh, how do you pick the primary key? And you could go all the way back to the relational model in order to help start answering that. But let's look at what happens if you get it wrong. Um, let's say we have lots of secondary indexes on this table. So maybe there are much more columns over here and lots and lots of secondary indexes. And then for some reason we want to run this command. Um, all this command is doing is I want to change somebody's UID. So the person who has UID 5, I want to set it to 6. So this right here should become a 6. And first of all, if you want to do this, then you've already done something wrong because uh, somebody's UID should never change, and that means you probably picked the wrong primary key. So let's look at what, what happens here if we do this. Um, so here we are after running this command. This has changed to a 6, and remember there are lots of secondary indexes. Since the primary key is what we use as a pointer in the secondary index, that means we have to go and find the old primary key of 5 and change it to 6 in every secondary index. So here's the one on just GPA. We would have to go and do that for all of the secondary indexes though. So that's just a lot of tree traversals that we would need to update um, in order to change some row's value for its primary key. So back to kind of rephrasing this question, not how do we pick the primary index, but how do we pick the primary key? Well, remember that your primary key is copied into every other index. That's what it uses as a pointer. So guidelines for picking the primary key, well, you know, it has to, it has to uniquely identify the row based on the relational model. Um, and now, we should never allow them to change. And why should they change? If a primary key is just an identifier, why would you ever change somebody's identifier? Um, and make them small. So I've been telling you all along that you should make primary indexes small. And we've been doing primary key refinement, where if we had a multi-column primary key, we would convert that to a unique index and then just make a new small like single integer primary key. And this is exactly why, because primary keys are copied all over the place into all the other secondary indexes. So you want them to be small so that they don't take up tons of space. So now how about picking secondary indexes? Well, we already talked a little bit about this last lecture. Basically, you need to think about the common queries that you're going to do on the tables. So do you need to filter by certain rows? And you have to remember that a join is probably going to be an implied filter, especially uh, like a natural join or any join with a condition. That's a filter that's going to benefit potentially from an index on certain columns. And we'll get much more into how the database engine processes queries and how we can pick the right secondary indexes um, in, in a future lecture.